Thank you, Michelle. Welcome to Mind Shifters Radio. Happy belated Mother's Day to you, Michelle, and to all of our listeners. We're here to talk about the ancient Aramaic process of forgiveness. We're here to help people learn how to use that process, direct them to the tools which are available free on the Internet through the gracious efforts of Dr. Michael Rice and Jeannie and a growing host of others who are maintaining the website and offering input, running support groups. So these tools are very practical tools which many have found when they apply them to their lives improve the quality of their life, improve the quality of their emotional state and their relationships and their physical and financial health. So as it came to me a few weeks ago in our support group, I opened the group by saying <clears throat> what we're going to talk about in the group tonight and each Tuesday night is not open for debate. It is, however, open for observation, always open for observation. And our, our invitation is for everyone listening to try the tools. Go to the website, www.whyagain.org. Click on the red and white bullseye in the center of the page, and that will take you to a page where you can download Chapter 24 of Dr. Michael Rice's book, Why Is This Happening to Me Again?, where he explains the worksheet process. It will also let you download the latest version of the seven-step worksheet process. There are a number of different multi-step worksheets. But this is all free. Click the link. It just automatically opens up a PDF file for you. And as I like to remind people, you don't even have to put in your email to be put on a mailing list. And right there, you'll have enough to get yourself started. You'll have Chapter 24 of his book and the worksheet itself, but they don't stop there. It's like a Popeil ad. And there's more. Keep scrolling down the page, and there are links for many different audio files of this show where Dr. Rice and Jeannie have stepped people through the worksheet process, real people who've called in, with real problems they wanted assistance with, and someone on the show steps them through the process to help them identify how their conscious logical mind is creating a problem and then tricking them into thinking that something outside of themselves or someone outside of themselves is actually creating the problem and the negative emotional response inside the person. And our invitation is to go to that website, download that material, and begin the practice of forgiveness. In the ancient Aramaic, the concept of forgiveness had nothing to do with pardoning someone, letting somebody else off the hook because they did something wrong. We fully understand that people do things that are mean, that are hurtful, that are disrespectful, and deceitful and insulting and degrading, we understand that people do those actions. We are not trying to say those things don't happen. We aren't trying to tell people, ignore the actuality in your life. What we're trying to help people understand is that whatever response they have to the actuality, to the actual situation that happens outside of them, all of that is created internally. Which is why, if I spill a cup of coffee in the middle of a day when I'm having a fabulous day, I just kind of chuckle and move on, and, and, and it doesn't cause much disruption in my day. But if I spill a cup, of co a cup of coffee in the middle of what I would call this horrible day where one thing after another is going wrong, spilling that cup of coffee in that moment might be the thing that I blame for an entire 20-minute you know, meltdown. So our invitation is to explore what they knew thousands of years ago, that everything a human being feels inside of him or herself 
is something that's created by energies that are already inside of him or herself. And yes, a person can become aware of energies outside of themselves, but they also have the infinite capacity to choose the focus of their conscious awareness and thereby create a very different internal experience of life. Independent of the outside circumstances, independent of the people around them and what they're choosing. And that's what the ancient art of forgiveness, the science or technology of forgiveness, as a process, was all about. In the ancient Aramaic, the term for this was shabag, which means to cut off or cancel. It means to dismantle. And various other words with a similar meaning from different languages. The idea is, if I create something of an experience inside of me that's negative, I experience a negative emotion of any kind. That's my internal alarm system, and it's there not to tell me there's a problem outside of me. It's there to tell me there's a problem inside of me. It's there to tell me my thinking is off target. A couple days ago on the show, we had Julie Haverstick on the show, and bless her heart, she has got some wonderful ways of talking about this, and she actually taught a class of behavior disorder kids where instead of telling people this is wrong and that's right, she talked to them about being on target and being off target. And the creator put these negative energies of emotions within us as our warning system to wake us up and let us know we're off target in our thinking. And thousands of years ago, people understood, if I think negative, angry, hurtful, bitter, or resentful thoughts, I will begin to feel the negative, angry, hurtful, bitter, or resentful emotions that go with those thoughts. My thoughts, the ones that I choose, consciously or unconsciously, actually create my emotions. And the system is set up so that I can know without any doubt whenever my thoughts are off target because I will be feeling stress, tension, anger, fear, sadness, hurt, guilt, shame, blame, resentment, or any of the other words that we use for that negative experience emotionally. So the invitation is to understand that when this wonderful system of knowledge about the human mind-body energy system got translated from one language to another, or was encountered by somebody who wanted to control other people and amass power, who was driven by ego, they realized, you know, I can't really control people. I can't really manipulate people or get them to pay me hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars if I teach them that happiness is an inside job, that they are creators and that they are creating their own experience moment to moment. I can't really control somebody if they're aware of that. So I'm going to tell them somebody else made them angry. They have a right to be angry at somebody else. Somebody else made them sad. They have a right to go after vengeance. They have a right to sue somebody. They have a right to hurt, insult, slap, or kill somebody because they're feeling angry or sad. That's going to leave them in an eternal loop of looking for the solution to the problem they're feeling inside themselves and looking outside for that problem where there's no solution. There will never be a solution for my sadness outside of me. There will never be a solution for my desire to have happiness outside of me. There will never be anyone or anything outside of me that ever makes me feel loved because it's all an inside job. So either it was lost in the translation from one culture to another, one language to another, or it was consciously hidden by people who had an agenda of control and greed and power. Either way, it's really useful. And many people have learned how useful it truly is to understand exactly how your mind-body energy system works. And that's our invitation. Our invitation is to not debate this, to not get into philosophical discussions about it, our invitation is try these tools, see how it works in your life, to move you from anger, fear, sadness, hurt, shame, guilt, blame, resentment, confusion, 
into that space of love, into that space of joy, aliveness, and connectedness, which is your true birthright. It is the stuff you are made of, and when you're fully consciously aware in the moment of your true nature, you desire nothing other than to stay in that moment and that awareness. I love the way Guy Finley talks about it in one of his lectures. He says, a lot is being made these days of the law of attraction and the world's of resonance issue and, and manifesting this and that. And he said, I'll tell you something. All of that is true. People can do that. But uh, I'll skip over to Way of Mastery. Way of Mastery says the problem with that is it's not a secret. You've been doing it all day, every day, your entire life. You've created your own anger and fear. You've created your own abundance. You've created your own joy. You've created your own sadness. And the problem with teaching people that if they decide they want a Mercedes, then they think all of these magical ideas and do all of these little gimmicks, and pretty soon there's a Mercedes in the driveway. Well, that can happen, but the problem with that is they can only desire to manifest what the culture has told them is important and they should be manifesting. And Guy Finley says, if you want to really use that manifesting thing and use it in a powerful way, manifest a way for yourself to be happy with whatever you have. And that will change your life. So we're here to help people understand that process, help people answer questions when they try to engage in that process if they don't understand it fully or they run into speed bumps. And we're here to have people share their testimonials, their difficulties, their successes in that process, whether they want to talk about starting a support group or they want to talk about fun experiences or intense experiences they've had in the support groups. And our number is 646 200 Four one six nine, and if you press one, Michelle will know that you're on the phone, or I'll know you're on the phone, and we'll ask for your comments or questions. One last point I want to make, which has been coming up over and over again, in this work as with any work, it's the work that counts. It's not the person. It's not the personality. It's not the style of presentation. It's the process of the work that's important. And any time you notice someone is promoting themselves as being a great teacher and someone's telling you that you need them to get to the real answers or you have to do just their process and nothing else works, please be skeptical. Please question that for yourself. The real issue is anyone can become a master. And I have found this in several different places, and one of the most recent ones was a way of mastery, where the key to becoming a master is mastering the art of always being a student. And anybody, Krishnamurti was, it was said it over and over again, anybody who tells you they know, they don't know. Anybody who tells you they're learning, that's someone to follow. Not as a person, but as whatever they're learning, whatever their process might be. Study that. They may have some good questions for you to examine for yourself. I would far, far prefer to have one really good question than a thousand rock-solid answers. So that's what we're here about today, and... um, I see that Dor has her hand up, and this is uh, Unstuck Wednesday, Possibilities Wednesday. I forget what the email said. We've been calling it a number of different things. Um, so, Michelle, who we got lined up on the queue? Well, Michael is here. I don't know if he's available to talk, or maybe he's listening in. I know they're in the middle of travel, so I wasn't sure whether or not he wanted to share anything at this point. Well, I would like to say a quick hello. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tim, for being here. 
I loved your point about the uh, the questions there. That, to me, is one of the beauties of getting to play with all the thousands of people we get to play with is we get to engage in all those refined questions, and that is the most awesome thing going. And uh, certainly the work is about putting the pen to the paper and using the tools as opposed to somebody, anybody's belief system. And we do have a few minutes here. Uh, we were supposed to meet someone at 10 o'clock in order to transfer from the car that we're driving into their car to drive to Portland from uh, from the Tri-Cities area in Washington State, but they're not here yet. And Michelle was sharing a little bit with me this morning uh, about their banquet and what happened, and I would love to hear more, and I'm wondering if maybe Rex is on the phone and uh, perhaps we could uh, – check in and see what's happening in that regard after uh, saying hello to Dora. I know Dora was going to be busy. We talked to her this morning, too. Okay, Michael. Um, Dora, let's say hello, and let's talk about Possibility Wednesday. How are you doing? Dora? Are you with us, Dora? Hey there, young lady. Um... Not sure what's going on. Hello? There she is. Hello, this is Nene. Oh, hello, Nene. How are you? Fine, great. Happy summer. Hey, haven't heard your voice in a while. We thought we we had uh, Dora on there, but uh, I know Dora was talking about uh, having a challenge with work today and wasn't likely going to be on the show. So, hello and welcome. What's exciting in your world? Well, um, good. Things are, are, are doing well. My daughter had a hip surgery, and everything was very successful. And, uh, well, I continue studying my work. I have a talk. Um, the difference between visualization compared to the Aramaic uh, work of the breath work and the worksheets to, you know, to achieve um, a goal, to manifest a goal. Well, I think that uh, visualization is another way of, uh, of holding a goal and can be a powerful way to motivate the mind. It's just it's one more tool. You know, and as we uh, fill the toolbox with the tools, then take the ones that work most effectively for you and put them to work. So visualization also it's it's it can help to I don't know to put the energy together or the attention together. Yes, I believe you can. Um, create another level of impetus. If you remember in the mind goal management sheet, we offer visualize with emotion the completion of this goal. And so that that adds another sense to the process. Because I, 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 I have found um, lately uh, things manifest without me asking or really uh, visualizing anything. It's just so I'm a little bit confused. Say, say that once again. Okay, I've noticed lately that many good things are starting to happen, happening yes. uh, without me asking or petitioning or doing anything. But I've been, you That's know, I've been natural. doing my work, and That's I am natural. over. I'm, yeah, my input would be that's totally natural when you're not holding the, you know, as you work through the generational patterns that are showing up as your creative process, when you forgive and remove those things, then the natural flow of life is abundance. And you listen to Yeshua, I come to bring you life and bring it more abundantly. And so all you need to do is turn your attention somewhere and you're bringing about. If there are no blocks within you, you're bringing about what it is that you're focusing on. That's creatorship. So that's Totally and completely natural. Okay. Because when um, I heard, you know, that Lucy told me that she had to, had a surgery, you know, I kind of felt, well, okay, I, I, in that moment I have no, no way to really go there or anything. And all of a sudden things started to happen, to put together, and 
my brother came, and I told him about me. So he gave me a ticket. I went to Venezuela, and then Lucy's father um, and I had a great conversation, and he supported us a lot. Like I was able to do some errands with him, and I was able to talk to him, and I was able even to breathe him. Sounds like the natural creative process of, of an abundant, true human being. Right on track, that's what we're heading for. And, and if something else shows up in your creative process, then if it's not in harmony with the truth of who you are, hold the newborn child, that awesome presence of love, and the result is that when you forgive, you remove that block and your next awesome result shows up. That's what, that's what the game is designed for. You know, yeah. you've heard me say in the workshop before that if we never defiled our temples, if we never put anything unlike love within our structure, the whole of life would simply be aliveness, joy, and creativity. And you just have to turn your mind to something, and there it would be. And unfortunately, most people are turning their mind to the hostility, the fear, the grief, the rage, the pain, the drama, trauma, not realizing that they're creating it and not willing to put the pen to the paper to forgive it. They get stuck in the negative creative process, but it's all a creative process. Okay. Okay, so I, I am I am thrilled. I'm very happy. You know, uh, all of a sudden, you know, it, it, we were there like parents for Lucy for the first time in Wonderful. 29 years, and the rest of the family on the, his side, and you know, but part of my family also. And it was very yeah. beautiful, very powerful to connect uh, in that greater human beautiful energy so I wanted to share it and um, well I, I really don't know any much about visualization but I do the breathing a lot <laughs> well and thank you for sharing it and you know with the drama and trauma that you've had in your family in the past you open mm -hmm. an energy window for every family and drama and trauma to break through to that level of creativity that's the idea of doing your work so congratulations and thank you thank you okay thank you all right. Well, have a blessed one, and uh, let's see if Rex is on the line with uh, Michelle. Uh, Michael, Rex has a client right now, and um, mm -hmm. I prefer waiting to disclose um, kind of our adventures at the prison and some of the major breakthroughs and breakdowns and Ruka's assistance and all the amazing miracles that are just unfolding right before our eyes and um so okay. i know that um maybe we can do it on tomorrow show. okay so um and, and and missy and i've been texting and if he gets free then we'll um, move forward with that but julie um Absolutely. From Oregon, got her Actually, hand I'd rather, i oh. would rather hold i would rather hold it until tomorrow if you would because i would like to hear it firsthand i'd like to be part of the conversation uh, it sounds like some pretty exciting stuff, and I'm not going to be able to be on this call for the whole time. The person who's picking this up should be arriving momentarily, at which point I'll have to drop off in order to repack cars and be on the road. So if okay. you would, hold it quick. Wow, that would be awesome. Yeah, when we, when we were at prison yesterday, um, he said he had chatted with you over the weekend and that you wanted to hear more, and he um, – Deferred. He's like, nope. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it with Michelle. <laughs> so yeah. I know that um, we're all, we're excited about what's going on. So, um, would you guys be willing to take a call from uh, Julie next? Yeah, let's go for it. Okay. Hello, Hi, Julie. 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 Hi. I just have a quick question. Is Michael and Jeannie, since they're heading to Portland, is there going to be maybe a still point breathing on Saturday or anything on Saturday I could probably attend on Saturday? Yeah, there's nothing set up for Saturday, unfortunately. And I'm just waiting to hear back on the timing. It looks like Sunday we are going to have the opportunity to do a Why Is This Happening to Me Again workshop, and I think it's going to start at 1 o'clock, but I'm waiting as we speak to get uh, confirmation. So I will certainly let you know as soon as we do, but it looks like on Sunday afternoon uh, from probably 1 till 5, 
uh, we're going to be doing a uh, why is this happening to me again workshop. And um, let's see. It's going to be at a place called Tabor Space on Belmont Street. Uh, from and I believe again it's going to be one to five, but I'm waiting to hear back to have that confirmed. There, we're still working on some other uh, things uh, happening, but at this point, uh, it's not solidified. Could you spell Tabor? Tabor, just Tabor. T, T A T A B O R space. Okay. So the, the it's I guess it's a room or a ta- Tabor space is the proper name of it, and it's at mm-hmm. five four four one. Southeast Belmont Street in Portland at 941. Okay. Southeast Belmont Street. 5441. I just want to, I'll repeat it. 5441 Southeast Belmont Street. Okay. Thank you. And Portland and the zip? 97215. And our ride is here, so I'm going to need to run. And so if you Thank would you. Uh, just, uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted. We'll be doing a flyer up as soon as we get confirmation. So Great. We'll get it all. Great. All right. Okay. Hey, all right. You. All right. Okay, Bye. take care. Bye-bye. Well, Dr. Tim, I'm going to hit it. Our, uh, our ride is here, so I'm going to go and uh, repack the car and get on the road, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing from everybody tomorrow. And once again, appreciation and blessings. Safe, fun travels. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. So here we are. We had our support group last night. Since uh, we're not going to talk about the prison work right now, I'll give a quick update on our support group yesterday. We had the first half of the Laws of Living DVD, and it sparked a whole series of questions And one of the interesting things for me that came up from it was somebody was asking, so is this where you fake it until you make it? And people started trying to answer that question, and finally it dawned on me, I'm not really sure I understand what that person means when they say fake it until they make it. And so I just asked, what what do you mean when you say fake it until you make it? And the response was really important because it was not at all what I had in my mind. And I would venture to guess it wasn't quite the same as what several other people have in their mind when they say fake it until you make it. So I just want to highlight the idea of increasing our awareness that words don't carry meanings. And this is directly out of the lecture that Dr. Rice gave on the laws of living. Words, tones, vibrations, images, they don't carry meaning. The thing that carries the meaning is the experience built into brain cells of the individual who hears or sees or feels the stimulation. So when somebody says, fake it until you make it, it may mean one thing completely different to them than it does to someone else. And one of my favorite examples of this comes from a book, I think it was Harville Hendricks, and he said, so we'll take this young couple, they get married, and... They're having a wonderful time. They're very attracted to each other. And soon after the marriage, they've had the honeymoon, and they're back at home, and one says to the other, Honey, would you like to go play tennis this afternoon? And the other one says, Sure. And within a few hours, they're on the verge of wanting a divorce. How could that happen? Well, in one family the history, the meaning behind the phrase, would you like to go play tennis, means we pick up with whatever we have on now, 
any kind of beat-up old racket that works, and we go down to the schoolyard and we beat a tennis ball back and forth, laughing and joking and not keeping score until we're tired and we want to go have ice cream. In the other family, let's go play tennis means we put on a $1,000 outfit and pick up a $1,500 tennis racket, and we go to the club, and we play this very structured game with somebody refereeing and keeping score and until we're sure, absolutely certain, that we know who won. These two people thought they were saying the same thing. They thought they shared an understanding of what it meant to go play tennis. And they learned the hard way that they each had a very different set of knowings and intuitions and brain cells and past experiences connected with the words, go play tennis. This is just one of the ways in which we create chaos in our world and our relationships. We do not understand how true it is that tones, vibrations, images, words don't have meaning. Individual brain cells have meaning. What gets resonated for me when someone says, let's go play tennis, or, gee, that was an interesting comment, or, wow, that's a, it's interesting that you chose to wear that sweater today, might be something very, very different than what gets resonated or what was intended by the person who spoke those words. And unless I'm aware and vigilant and persistent, and I make the choice to ask the person to check it out, to take full responsibility for what gets stirred up in me, and, and allow this other person in front of me to have full responsibility for what they're saying and doing and what they're feeling, I really don't have much chance of having a deep, connected, intimate relationship and an effective communication. So that's just a point that came to me from last night. We also had somebody who did a, a worksheet on a set of issues that came up, and it prompted quite a few people around the room to have similar worksheets because this was a dynamic about someone dealing with their parent and since we all have parents we all have issues related to our parents uh, so that was the worksheet process last night and I see we have someone else with their hand up so let's unless Michelle you have some other question or comment or something going on in the chat room um, no, let's um, see, area code 517, you're on the air. It's 516. Oh, excuse me. 517's Lansing. 516, you're on the air. Hi, my name is Lisa LeMay. Oh, and, Lisa. Um, hi, how are you today? Are you from Connecticut? Actually, um, that's a New York uh, extension, but I'm in Florida. Okay. I know Dora, actually. Um, we just did started a new seminar on Michael Rice's work in Boca about a week ago with Margaret and um, Gus and Michael. Do you know Margaret and Michael at all? Yeah, Margaret participated in the women's workshop in November, and um, I know that Michael and her have been doing the work for, for a while, as has... Uh, um, Dora, it sounds like you have a real powerful mind shifter group there. Yes, we we were disbanded, so to speak, but we came together. Nene is and Dora is more in Fort Lauderdale, and so we we uh, did one. I'm all the way in Palm Beach in Jupiter, so I'm far away, but I go all that way because it's so important to me. And I actually had a question, if maybe you could help me, because I'm I stand in the place of love for a long time now. But as the uh, I still found myself dealing with issues, so it went back to so it was perfect timing to activate a group again, so we could go back and practice the sheets. I actually printed a hundred blanks this morning because that's how dedicated I am to deal with some of the issues. So uh, my question, maybe you can help me with, since Michael left, um, is. You know, I've done still point breathing, and I've listened to all of Michael's DVDs, um, and I'm working with Jeannie right now, just starting to, because she just made some distinctions to, distinctions to get me on track 
to really, you know, what forgiveness is, to and to erase those carbon-based memories. Um, and and for me, like you were talking with your family and your parents. So I guess my question is, when you're in that moment and you're dealing with an issue and you're standing as love and, you know, you're breathing, which is so critical, obviously, as you instead of holding your breath while you're crying, you know, um, and you're thinking of love, but really you're thinking of the truth because you're remembering the child having the experience and, and, and that it's just a carbon-based memory as an adult realizing that. So, you know, the forgiveness happens, the healing happens. Is there anything, a, a distinction you can give me to help that? To help what? In that moment? Well, being in that moment, other than what I'm saying, to get through the moment and heal and do Michael's work, is there any other distinction uh, I should be thinking of or helping well, me? Well, just, just to be clear... When you say you've been standing in the space of love for a long time, but, and then you said there's problems with it, what do you mean by standing in the space of love? Well, um, I, I'm a very big believer in God, and I've been uh, standing, I've been alone most of my life because I haven't had much family, so I really just stand as truth and love most of the time, um, no matter what I'm doing, business or family, um, I find instead of because I'm I'm Spanish and Italian, so I could easily go off. And so, <laughs> so I mean, it is it's, it's just in your DNA. So especially I'm older now, but when I was younger, you you know really had a lasso it in shape. And um, I thought I had made so many progress, such progress, because especially in the last few years. I'm t- to the point where my creativity is is really doing well, and I'm was also a blessing to others. Um, but then issues came up where I realized I hadn't, you know, I had needed to go back and do the sheets and deal with issues um, because there was obviously yeah, um, um, issues. So I wanted to go back and do the work and and do the and get rid of the issues to forgive and heal them so I can really be empowered instead of thinking I am. Okay, well, um, one thing that comes to me as I listen to you is that um, citing your heritage, your lineage, as an excuse for really going off or having a hot temper is really just that. It's an excuse. It's, it's been conditioned into us for decades, if not centuries, that these traits Which belong to. Which is why to. most of the time I don't do it anymore, and I take pride in that, you know. And, and always the outcome when I'm standing as love, even in the worst situations, I'm a, a commercial real estate broker who did store leasing with national retailers in, in New York Metro. So, um, you know, I had a very tough industry, and to stand as with integrity and, you know, doing God's work, so to speak, you know, instead of just thinking of business and money and all of that. And so, but in recent years, like my mom just passed and, you know, we all that was dug up and I am, everyone was, had been victimized and I stood as love and I was just, it was wonderful because the outcome was different. Had I been that old person where I used to react in any kind of anger or not, you know, realizing, um, you know, taking responsibility for my own actions. Um, so, so is and- okay. So, so here's the next thing that strikes me is that if you've been working at this for years and working at standing as the space of love and using some of the tools like the breath work and the worksheet process, and you've had quite a bit of success, you might have raised your vitality level to the point where now you have the energy to deal with some of the deeper levels of trauma and some of the deeper levels of the genetics and the energetic patterns from both your mother's side of the family and your father's side of the family. Exactly. And so now it may not be so easy for you all of a sudden. It isn't. It hasn't been. And I've I've virtually, in the last three weeks, I 
I, you know, it's, you know, you are what you listen to, you know, and you, and so stop the TV and just listen to Michael's tapes over and over and over or Bruce Lipton's tapes or Gary Null, because I've gone organic and I'm, I've, I'm healing my body as well at the same time. Um, but I'm allowing myself to bring these things up and dealing with them where I thought I dealt with them, but obviously I haven't if, if they're happening again. Or, um, for me, or, it's, for me, it was friends who you know, I'm, I'm, this, have been... Con, a, consider this uh, possibility. Okay. Not deal with it. You did deal with it. You dealt with it at different levels, that you've dealt with many of these things at different levels. And when it comes back around, it's simply an opportunity to deal with it at a deeper level. Hmm, that's a nice distinction because it's true. Well... Yeah, Dale Allen it Hoffman is a deeper. Came, uh, yeah, Dale Allen Hoffman came uh, and gave a talk recently, and he talked about how in the ancient Aramaic, <clears throat> or in the Bible, they talk about um, loving your enemy. And the word that we have translated or that came down through the Greeks as enemy, in the ancient Aramaic, what that word really means is the person in front of whom you cut off your breath. You feel tight or constricted. You start to feel something. It could be anybody who resonates something inside of you that's less than love, and you begin to feel it, and you want to cut off your breath, shut down the feeling, and blame it on them or run away. So this could be your brother that you love dearly, your best friend for four decades, the word enemy in that phrase meant from the ancient Aramaic, anyone in whose presence I want to cut myself off from my breath, cut myself off from my feelings. So yeah. in any situation, in, in any situation in front of any person where I start to feel a negative emotion, a tightness, a tension, my breath goes shallow or I hold my breath or I feel any intense negative emotion, I am currently in the presence of a person that would have been called my enemy. I see. Now, there's, there's another line from scriptures, which I used to think had a very different meaning. And that line from scriptures is, if you do these things, if you seek first the kingdom of heaven, and you don't worry about tomorrow, and you do what is told on the, on the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes, then banquet will be prepared for you in the presence of your enemies. And when I was a child and I heard this in Catholic school, I thought that meant if I align with the true and powerful God, he will destroy and defeat my enemies for me, and then lay a banquet for me to eat in front of them. So they'll be embarrassed and shamed, and I will be exalted because I chose the right team. I chose the God of love and power. And I literally had images like that in my mind, of this huge banquet for anybody who was on our team, who signed, who aligned with God. And, and more recently, I've been digging into and unpacking a whole different level of spiritual truth from that phrase. And Guy mm -hmm. Finley and Way of Mastery are, have both helped me with this, and now I've come to understand it this way. If I can stand in the presence of someone with in whose presence I want to cut off my breath and I start to feel something negative, if I can focus inwardly and keep my breath going and actually look at and work with, use the tools to dismantle the garbage that's coming up inside of me, that's the feast. That's my banquet. The benefits well, can I, I jump get... In? Can, I, can I just, just jump in and use an example? Because I'm down to where this, I'm living and breathing this. And I just came back, for example, you'll laugh at this example, but it's, it's just everyday life, which is how you apply when, is when it happens. So I went, I went to get my hair cut, and, and I walked in, and, and she was, there was a woman there, and she said she could take me. I said, all right, I'll just have to park. And when I came back, she had taken someone else. 
And so I sat down and I said, all right, it's, you know, coming up. <laughs> How are you going to handle this? You know, now in the past I would um, just allow her to do, uh, I'm, I'm trying to say a distinction where there's worthiness. I've been working on my worthiness where it's not just, it, part of it is, is always showing blessings, but then you can't let people walk all over you. So it's to stand in a place of love and still feel good that you achieved your highest and best interest in the place of love. And, and, and you know, to add insult to injury, she was giving me dirty looks. And I just, there were two women there, and I asked God, please let me get the other woman that she's finished and can just take me. So, you know, I have to not have to be... Uh, in the presence of having to deal with this woman now going to cut my hair. <laughs> and so I really reckoned with it because all I want to do is get up and walk out of the store. And I sat in love, and um, I but I sat in worthiness as well. And so instead of just going because, you know, that would have been the thing you're next in line, you go and sit down, who cares the way she treated you? I said, no, thank you. I'll just wait for the other person. And when I sat down with her, I was all grateful and thankful for the cut that I got. I walked out of there just feeling happy and content and not having have achieved the love in the moment. Did I do good? I mean, did I, was I, is that the point of it all? Here's, here's the answer to your question. How did you feel? I felt really proud of myself. If you felt good then you've done good. If you held the space In the past, love, I would have just allowed myself to say, okay, she's a mean-spirited woman and she's not going to affect my day and uh, I'll just let her cut my hair because I'm next in line. And that wouldn't have, would have been brought up, you know, brings up worthiness issues. No, she doesn't deserve to cut your hair. You can be respectful. So just wait for the next person and thank her. And okay. I just felt really good about that, that, Instead of sitting in anger for 20 minutes waiting for someone or walking out of the store, which I desperately needed my haircut for um, events tomorrow, you know, I needed to deal with it in a space of love instead of my old uh, heritage kicking in and getting up and making a hissy fit or any of that. And and so I well, just feel, I just feel, yeah. It, it sounds like in the moment you did very well and that you like the results you got. And I would applaud that because we're results-oriented here. And the one thing I would add is it sounds like from your words, you're saying that when this woman took someone else instead of you after you went out to park, you said it several times, it brought up worthiness issues. And you handled those issues well, well, Mm -hmm. and you didn't dump it on the other person, which is excellent, Say that again, I didn't hear that part. Which part? I'm just, the, just Tell me the part you sentences. didn't hear. I didn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what I, you didn't hear. I don't hear. want to miss anything. I don't <laughs> want to miss anything. Okay, okay so here's what I'm saying. Okay. That it sounds like you handled it well because you felt good and you got what you needed. And as I listened to you, you said at least three times it brought up worthiness issues. And in the moment, it sounds like you did a very good job of noticing the worthiness issues, noticing the negative energies inside of you, and holding on to them and not dumping them on the other person. That's fabulous. You got good results. To take your work to the next level would be to go home and do some worksheets on the worthiness issues that got stirred up when this woman took someone else instead of you when all you did was go to park your car. Exactly, and that's what I, I, I printed. I felt so proud after that. I went to Kinko's and printed a uh, hundred sheets, worksheets, four different kinds. Because you know, I realize now, especially after some comments Jeannie made uh, to get me on track with certain distinctions, and how I was looking at it. Um, you know, it's all about the work. Period. You know. Okay. It's just, so you so let's, specific, work. let's let's specifically talk to you about what one or two of those worksheets might be and how you might go about today or tomorrow or next week doing some worksheets on that situation. 
Do you have any idea where to start to do a worksheet on that? Um, well, to, to it, it's all it, it comes up because it's the main issue. One of the reasons I needed to go deeper was I shared blessings with people who I thought were friends, and I and I then I realized going really deep that oh my god that the, my point was because my parent my father died at seventeen and my mother took off. And and instead of having abandonment issues and being victimized, you know, I've really gone through a lot and come full circle with it. But um, I'm getting off track in my mind what I want to say. Let me um, let me let me get you back on I'm track. Sorry. I was asking you a specific question okay. about what would a worksheet look like? Whether you do it later today that or tomorrow. The worksheet would look like that. I felt that the woman was disrespecting me. Okay, and so that you could put. So you could yes. put this other woman in 1A. Right. And you could write a brief description in 1B that she said she would take me next and then she took someone else. And then you can write what your emotion was. And then you can write the thought that's generating that emotion. Were you angry that she took someone else or were you sad or were you confused? So the, mm-hmm. the thought that you're using to generate the emotion must match the emotion. So an angry thought might be, well, she just disrespected me by taking that other person. And if I sit and think that thought, she really disrespected me by taking that other person long enough, I'm probably going to feel angry. Exactly. So then you come down to the goal your goal for this and several other worksheets would be about this person to see you as valuable and worthy or this person to respect you. Mhm. And so and that's when I lose part of it because um Go ahead, keep going. Well, that's where you lose part of what? What are you talking about? What do you lose? Well, um, most of what I, the work I've been doing, which is, is, you know, is not that I needed to actually do the worksheets um, instead of doing it in my head. And so, so, so let's just well, use her as an example. So, okay. so I so, would feel anger, and then how would I see her respecting me in that moment when I didn't take my frustrations out on the new woman and complimented her and, and had a good session where the aura was positive, she okay, re- that's not, that's she, not the whole mood changed. She re- uh-huh. Okay, but that's not you know what? what you're doing the worksheet on. Okay, so tell me then. I don't know the distinction. You're doing the worksheet on the interaction you had with the first woman, and you stay there. You had a goal for that first woman who said, I'll take you next, you had a goal for her. And you need to be clear about what that goal is because when she didn't meet that goal, up comes your issues. And the whole forgiveness process is based on understanding whenever I'm feeling a negative emotion, a tightness, a tension, a physical, there's an energy in me that doesn't belong there. And if I identify the goal I'm holding for someone or something outside of me, now I've identified the key way, the path that will lead me into my unconscious, the part of my mind that's actually holding the pain-producing material. If I have a goal for this woman to respect me and to treat me as though I'm worthy and worthwhile, And if she respected me and treated me as though I was worthy and worthwhile, then she never would have taken this other person. She would have waited for me, and then I wouldn't have to feel this anger, and I wouldn't have the thought that she disrespected me. So that would be a good goal. My goal is for this woman to treat me with respect and and value me and to keep her word to me or something like that. When I get that goal that lines up with the person, the situation that happened, my thoughts and the emotions they're creating, then when I cancel that goal for her to treat me with respect, to hold me as someone who's valuable, 
and worthy and ask to be shown the hidden part of my mind that's actually creating my anger, Mm -hmm. then I get results. Then I get shown things about how my own mind is actually creating my anger. Now, we're almost out of time. I did... Uh-huh. Let me let me just okay, suggest okay. that you work with that a little bit and maybe yes. come back and listen to the show again if there were parts you missed. We need to wrap it up for today. But that's an excellent set of questions. Oh, I so thank you questions. and appreciate it and I'm grateful for your time. Well, it's an excellent set of questions and we appreciate the call and the questions and this is exactly what Michael was talking about. The questions that help us go deeper and explore this work so, so who are you? This is uh, Tim Hayes. I'm a psychologist in Crystal Lake, and um, Crystal I help Lake out on where? the show from time to time. Pardon me? It, Crystal, Crystal Lake, Illinois, Lake in Missouri. Uh, about an hour and a half outside of Chicago. I see. Excellent. Well, so you're you, you know you you might as well be talking to Michael when you're on the phone. So it's uh, so well, wonderful. Me. Oh, thank you. But believe me, there are a lot of us who know this work this well. And the point is, keep doing the work, and you will soon know it this well. The point is, to become a master at anything, you must commit to be a perpetually avid student of that work. And I thank you so much for the calls and excellent set of questions. And we're down to the last 90 seconds, so... Thank you, Michelle, for running the switchboard and the chat room. And thank all of you who are listening. This is Mind Shifters Radio. What are we on Wednesday? So tomorrow, Thursday, please come back, bring a friend, and um, do us all a favor and have the best year yet of your eternal life.